In the last episode, we cleaned out the lifters and made a mess. Judging by the funk left in the ice cube tray, we're going to continue making a mess. I'm sure you saw the chunks of funk we got out of those things, and that means junk flowed through everything else in the engine too. When an engine experiences the kind of failure that mine did, you're lucky to salvage anything that oil touches, and so far I've been lucky. Let's see if that luck continues. There's what left? The springs and the rockers, right? Well, what better thing to do with the last batch of contaminated kerosene from cleaning the lifters than to clean the rockers with it too? This isn't complicated. You have to clean the rockers if you're rebuilding your head. Have to. They contain oil passages. This step includes an inspection process, and the purpose of it is to decide what to keep and what to throw away. It really is that simple. There's nothing you can repair on a rocker arm. Since it's easiest to diagnose a clean part, we're going to do both right now. It's a couple of weeks since I started this bath. The kerosene is nice and murky brown. You need to focus on four things when you're inspecting the lifter. The oil hole and the crown of the rocker arm. This thing loves to get clogged with debris. The hole is tiny. The other side has the radius where the HLA seats and forces oil through it. You want to make sure the bearing spins freely and you can't feel any grit. That there are no wear patterns on the bearing surface. No play in the needle bearings. If the bearing feels weird in any way after it's cleaned, replace the rocker arm. Don't bother, you're wasting your time trying to clean it out. The damage is likely done already. The third thing is the radius where the HLA meets the rocker. You want the cup free of trash, and the seat showing no signs of pitting, marking, or rust. Any of those things means it's trash. The fourth and final thing is the seat where the rocker sits on top of the valve stem. Wear marks here indicate problems with the valve install height, spring rate, over revving, or valve float. Most of these are related. Also, aftermarket camshafts cause premature wearing of the rocker arms because the increased ramp angle they have slaps the valves open faster than the stock cams do. I'm using a pick to poke out each oil hole. Some of these are crunchy, listen. I can only apologize for the focus. It's very hard to get in close like this on parts this small, but you get the idea. Closely inspect this oil hole on all 16 rocker arms and don't leave this to chance because if you miss the problem, the results of that mistake can be expensive or catastrophic, but usually not immediate. After poking out the hole, pull out the heavy guns and blow it out with compressed air. Get both sides. When you're done, you should be able to see through it easily and both the cup and the oil hole are clean. If you look carefully, you'll see a little pinhole of light. Repeat this on all 16 rockers. It's at this stage while you're doing this that you should also be checking each bearing to ensure there's no slop and that they spin freely. Wear patterns are obvious after they're cleaned. If they show either of these signs, follow this up with closely examining the cam lobes for damage. It could indicate problems with the valve train geometry and or an oiling problem in the head. Flip the rockers over and inspect all the seats where they contact the AHLAs and also where they contact the valve stems. But this isn't good. This isn't pitting. This one is foobard. The valve surface is chewed up and that means it's either my fault from over revving it and causing valve float or the springs I'm using are too tight or binding. It's not the only one either. This kind of stinks because they're 18 bucks a piece. Going down the line, several of them are chewed up or cracked. While this kind of damage can occur from oil starvation, it can also happen from incorrect valve geometry. You bet I'll be scrutinizing the valve install height and spring rates before putting this one back in service. While that's part of the blueprint process, measuring it accurately requires tools that are too cost prohibitive for my project. I'll rely on a machine shop for that help. So like flipping a light switch, separate the wheat from the chaff and soak your good rockers in clean oil to prevent them from rusting prior to installing them. So I've got 8 good rockers and 8 bad ones. I need a half a set. Knew that would be 150 bucks plus shipping. Well, I pulled this whole set out of a non-turbo 1G in a junkyard a few years ago for 16 bucks. Didn't really need them at the time, but I knew they'd be worth something to me someday. You can pull them without removing the cams, and you can use any 4G63 or 6G72 rocker arm, because they're all the same part. 1G, 2G, Chrysler, New Yorker, it doesn't matter. There's a list of cars that came with a 24-valve 6G72 engine linked in the description section of this video, which may be more prevalent in your local junkyard than a 4G63 of any kind. I won't be reusing any of this set on the GSX, but I'm rat packing these eight just in case. So it looks like I'm rolling with my spare set. And next time I'm in the junkyard, I'll scout for a new set of spares for later. I need at least eight more to complete another head I'm working on, and it's not likely that I'll be buying 16 new ones anytime soon. Not when I can get all 16 of them for less than the cost of one. It's better than reusing these, and as long as you know what to look for, you can avoid introducing unfavorably worn parts to your valve train.